Well, hello, this is Aaron Filbrin from the Master's Seminary. I'm the Director of Student Services, and it is a true pleasure this afternoon to be joined by Yadid Dore. Yadid is one of our seniors that is graduating this coming May, and uh, we have the, the pleasure and the privilege of, uh, of being joined by Yadid and the opportunity to hear a bit of his testimony. And as we'll find out uh, through this time, just a testimony of God's goodness and faithfulness in his life. So, Yadid, it's good to, to be with you and glad to have you here. Well, uh, TMS family, it's an honor to, uh, as Aaron said, it's an, my name is Yadid Dare, and it's an honor to be able to share my senior testimony with you this afternoon uh, due to our, as you know, our local and state officials stay at home order. Uh, I'm sharing my senior testimony from my home. Um, I would have never thought that I would be sharing this testimony from my own bedroom uh so but then i thought about it and and then i started thinking that even being here in this uh bedroom is just a testimony of god's goodness and faithfulness in my life and so i'm so glad that we're here uh but uh i'll just want to uh, before i say anything i'll read psalm 34 1 through 6 and then i'll share the rest of my testimony psalm 34 verse 1 through 6 reads the following i will bless the lord at all times his praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul will make its boast in the Lord. The humble will hear it and rejoice. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me and he delivered me from all my fears. They looked to him and were radiant and their faces will never be ashamed. This Poor man cried, and the Lord, the Lord hurt him and saved him out of all his troubles. I love Psalm 34 because it vividly reminds me of the goodness and faithfulness of the Lord in my life. As Aaron said, my name is Yadi Del Rey. I was uh, born in Baja, California, in a city called Mexicali. Uh, my family and I were all Roman Catholic unbelievers. Uh, since my grandmother lived here in the U.S., my mother decided to move to this country so that my sister and I could have a better education uh, and live the so-called American dream. Without the Lord, however, the pursuit of that dream soon became a nightmare. I pursued environmental engineering an environmental engineering degree from UCSD uh, from UC San Diego for two reasons. One because I knew I could make money with it, and two, because my heart was empty, and I knew I needed a sense of purpose and meaning in life. And so I thought saving the earth um, would finally give me a, that sense of purpose that I did not have. I was completely wrong. After graduating as an engineer, I, was, I started working for the city of Palm Desert in the energy department. While there, I started making contacts to pursue a master's degree or a PhD from Berkeley in something related to, believe it or not, to social justice and the environment. But God, around that time, started piercing my heart with his Holy Spirit and started convicting me of all the sin that I had done while at UCSD. One day, as I was working at the city, someone had their office door open and I heard Christian music playing from their computer. As soon as I heard biblical lyrics, I entered the office and asked the person where he worshiped. He invited me to his church and so I visited his church in August 2009 where I heard the gospel for the first time and the Lord became real. I was it was from that moment on that the Lord started closing doors at the city of Palm Desert and started opening doors for me for ministry. It was the church I had visited through a man named Eric Martin that the Lord gave me a passion and a heart for evangelism and also for church planting. To make a long story short, in the spring of 2014, somebody bought me a ticket for the 2015 Inerrancy Summit. That was my first time at a Shepherds Conference. It was there during an MDiv prospect dinner 
on the third floor of the tower building on a Thursday night that Pastor John MacArthur showed up and he told us that the mission field did not need a nurse, but needed a doctor. He told us that if we were called by God to shepherd his people, then we needed training. We needed to come to the master's seminary. And that was in 2015. And so I knew that I had been called to ministry. I knew that I had been called to church planting. Therefore, I knew I needed pastoral and theological training. And the best place for that training was the master seminary. So I started praying, Aaron. I started praying. I started seeking the Lord's will. And the Lord answered. He moved the hearts of people from different churches in order that I could begin seminary training in August 2016. So I moved to LA to start my 2016 fall semester without knowing if I would be able to make it financially or academically. But the Lord was so faithful and so good. Now I'm here in the spring of 2020, giving my senior testimony, and I'm about to graduate. The Lord brought me through. This was his training. This is his degree, and so he deserves all glory. So I'd like to say a couple of thank yous here, um, if I may. I would like to thank the TMS family, all TMS faculty and seminary professors for working so hard in making the Master Seminary the best seminary in the world. I am so thankful to all my seminary professors for believing in the doctrine of the divine authority and inerrancy of Scripture. Thank you, professors, for believing that what the Bible affirms, God affirms. Thank you because now I not only have the necessary tools to train other men in pastoral ministry and theology, but now more than ever I have an increased confidence in God's word and believe that what the Bible says, God says. Thank you for not making me doubt God's word. Thank you, TMS, for the superb and excellent theological training in these last four years that I've been here. Thank you for shepherding us, loving us, and seeing us, the student body, as the treasure of this seminary. Also, a special thanks to all those generous and invisible donors who have faithfully invested in God's kingdom with their donations to TMS. To them, I too say thank you. And now if I may, I'll say a couple of things to a couple of professors here. Dr. Mook, I'd like to say thank you to you for your Theology 1 class and taking us to Psalm 145, verse 3, to teach us about the blessed despair of the believer. To Dr. Vlack, I'd like to say thank you for teaching the Kingdom of God class. The Lord used it to help me understand my Bible better by seeing with clarity its kingdom theme throughout Scripture. To Dr. Hargrove, thank you for not only offering the pastor in the prayer class and the pastor in the holiness class, but for modeling for us what it is to, me, to be a man who prays and a man who pursues holiness. So thank you. And to Dr. Farnell, Maximus. Thank you for reminding us again and again that the power in the pulpit is not our education, but our power in the pulpit is the Spirit of God. Now, if I may, Aaron, I am also would like to say thank you to Grace Community Church. And uh, I'd like to say thank you to Grace Community because of their exemplary love for and commitment to God's Word and God's people. Thank you, Pastor Henry Tolopilo. Thank you, Pastor Mike Mahoney. Thank you, Pastor Josias Grauman, Pastor Mark Sakovich, Pastor Chris Hamilton, Pastor Han Cho, Pastor uh, Carl Hargrove, Pastor Rick McLean, and others. Thank you all for shepherding me, counseling me, loving me, and embracing me as your own. I am thankful to the Lord for all of you. And now I want to say some thank you to my friends and some family members. And I'd like to say a special thanks to those people who've been supporting me faithfully during these four years. Families such as the Espinosa family, the Crooks family, the Duvals family, the Hernandez, the Queiroz, the Iraeta family, Grace Chapel, First Fundamental Bible Church, and many others that the Lord used so faithfully. But I also would like to give special thanks to my mother, Mirella Rubio. Like Eunice to Timothy, 
my mother has been a key in me being here at TMS. As a matter of fact, she was the one that the Lord used to buy me the ticket so I could come to the Narancy Summit in 2015. Without question, she has been more than a faithful supporter. So I'll say thank you, Mom. And the future. I'll talk about the future here real quick. During these four years at, at TMS, the Lord actually did not quench, but grew and kindled my desire for church planting here in the U.S. and in Mexico. And so if it is His will, I would love to do church planting in the city of Palm Desert, which is where my family currently lives. And one day in the future, church planting in the city of Guadalajara, which is where my family comes from. But for now, I have decided to stay here at my church, Grace Community Church, in order to learn from and be under the guidance of the elders. I also look forward to learning from the leadership of Grace Events, which is the uh, church planting ministry of Grace Community Church, um, and continuing to be equipped uh, before the Lord and His grace send me to plant. In the meantime, in the midst of this COVID-19 pandemic in this country and around the world, I will continue to persevere in prayer because, as R.C. Ryle said, prayer achieves things that would otherwise be completely impossible and out of reach. So thank you for your time. And now I'm going to close with Psalm 27, verse 13 to 14, which offers to all of us uh, resilient hope during these uncertain times. The Psalms reads, 27 reads the following, verse 13. I would have despaired unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord, be strong, and let your heart take courage. Yes, wait for the Lord. Thank you. Yeah, Dean, thank you so much for just the wonderful opportunity we've had to hear of God's faithfulness in your life and a, a wonderful testimony of his work. And as you said, uh, may all glory go to God. He is worthy. So thank you again. It's been good spending some time with you and we'll be praying for you and uh, what the Lord has in, in the years to come. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you so much for the opportunity.